Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. You guys know my good sis Cardi B dropped her latest single, um, Enough Miami. And I will say this, I did like it. Um, I, you, you know Cardi B is going to eat with the visuals. Her visuals are always going to be on point. That's just part of Cardi B's aesthetic. She's going to make sure she has like a lot of different pieces and stuff like that. Me personally, what I like the most is that it's just her on a track. Y'all know how I feel about these features with these new artists. I'm over the features. It's just way too many. It's almost like these girls can't stand on their own too. They got to have a buddy with them. They got to have somebody on their track. So I'm glad that the past two songs that she's dropped, it's just been her. Because um, we haven't had a solo feature from Cardi B since literally Bodak Yellow. Well, no, Up. Up, she was by herself on Up. But yeah, um, so I'm glad she did that. But I did like the video. So in Cardi B style, she's been doing like a press run. And so she met up with Million Dollars Worth of Game. She did a sit down with um, Wallow and Gilly. And in that sit down, she was talking about people going 50-50 in relationships, like as far as bills and stuff like that. And so it caused quite a bit of controversy. So we're going to go ahead and um, let me pull that up here. Watch what she had to say to Gilly and Wallow about the situation. Give me just a second here. So I can pull this up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and listen to this. From Cardi. All right, so so this is what I believe in, right? Like Me it's too. like if if you're gonna be the type of bitch that like a nigga you want a nigga to take care of you and everything, but it's like all right, you have to like pick a balance. Like it's like you cannot just be a bitch that's like oh my man take care of me. He does all the bills, but it's like what do you do? What are you contributing? Like, it's like, all right, like, you can't be complaining, like, oh, I cook, I clean every day. It's like, okay, but you don't work. You don't contribute to the house. So I just feel like it's like, so, and like, sometimes people be like, oh, so this is like really controversial, right? Cool. I feel like it's very controversial when like, be like, oh, I don't go 50 50, but it's like, all right. So if you and your man make the same amount of, of money, right? Mm -hmm. But only your man is the one that paying all the bills. How y'all are gonna save up to like buy a house or buy a business? Cause he's never gonna be able to afford to. So it's like certain things is like a, a joint thing to do. You, you know gotta what I'm work saying? I got a message for y'all from okay. Cardi. All right, so so this is, but I just be feeling like sometimes people, like the internet really be having people fucked up from like real reality type shit. So it's like, it's like, all right, so your, your mom and dad used to work every single day right mm -hmm. so your mom and dad used to work every single day so your mom could save her money and what buy purses and your dad just pay all the bills that's not how it worked this no. is that your mom was in the house cooking and cleaning every day your dad was working or they was both working to to pay both the bills like y'all be right. acting like y'all don't know what the fuck that is like no more like come on and your mom money was your was your dad money and your dad money was your mom money. Like, it was it was like that it was, it, like it's like I, that's what i'm saying like i'm not a feminist anymore because it's like sometimes it's like y'all bitches don't be living in the real world right Y'all not living there. Y'all be talking about, my money is my money and his money is my money. Shit. I mean, my money is my money and his money is my money. But like, oh! <laughs> my money is my money. Like, my money is my money and his money is his money. But it's like, but you know, like, it's like we both spent money on each other and right. everything. And it's like, if we want to go and everything, it's like, I mean, like, it's like, it's like. Okay. All right. So now she decided to backtrack on what she said with Gillian Wallow. Because she started catching heat. So, let me go ahead and share this. 50, 50, people started spreading it that I said that women and men have to go 50-50. And, you know, like, the men started praising me and the women started attacking me. And I want to make this very fucking clear, right? I'm going to make two things clear. First thing first, I never said that women and men have to go 50-50. Never said you have to go 50-50. Then you have cursing me out like it's like oh yeah you get cheated and you go 50 50 in your home blah, blah, blah. all right like I'm, i want to make this very 
be clear. Me and Austin, we don't go 50-50. We bought a house and we went half and half on our Atlanta home. Um, we got two properties that we bought together, two investment properties. And I bought my home in Jersey myself and he bought a condo in Miami himself. So, you know, like, um, we're part of the 1%, uh, and we're very fortunate that, um, we're very fortunate that we're very successful and everything. However, there was a point in life that I wasn't successful. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with regular parents. And let me tell you something. My mom, she did not work until I was six years old. She was a fucking princess, laid up, feet done in the Chinese store every single other day, whatever the fuck, doing good. We even had one of them big uh, TV screens. My dad lost everything. When I tell you my dad lost everything, my dad lost everything. And um, then my dad became a cab driver. My dad became a cab driver and my mom had to get a job. And my question to you is, right? When my dad lost everything and became a cab driver and he couldn't pay the the whole, the rent with the bills and everything, was my mom supposed to, was she supposed to leave him? Was she supposed to leave, leave him? Um, one thing about it is, even though my dad lost everything and he, and he had to start cab driving, guess what? I was never in a fucking shelter. There was not one time that the lights went out. There was not one time that we didn't have cable. The only time that we didn't have cable was when my mom and dad separated when I was like 13. But the point is, right, um, my dad was paying the rent and my mom was helping on the bills. Like, that's what partnership is uh, about. And then um, then they started saving money. They started saving money because they wanted to buy uh, real estate upstate, you know, foreclosure homes and rented and everything. Then my parents separated. But, you know, he took his money and she kept her money. Then you have <laughs> cursing me out like, it's like, oh, yeah, you get All right. <laughs> back on the screen this is my issue okay cardi will say something and then as soon as she gets backlash or people not agreeing with it then she'll like come back to try and backtrack and no but i didn't mean it that way cardi stop explaining yourself to people if you feel like you know what i'm saying people should come to the relationship and it should be 50 50 that is your stance. I don't think you have to change that for anybody because at the end of the day, th whatever works for you in your relationship is what works for you in your relationship. So I hate when people say something and then, you know, as soon as the backlash is severe, then it's, well, hold on, let me go ahead and explain. I, I don't explain shit. I said what the fuck I said, and if you feel away, move the fuck around. It's that simple. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, it was just a bunch of words, sadly, and I don't think she needed to even, like, reiterate what she meant as far as that situation whatever works for her and offset is what works for them now i'm gonna say this as far as the whole 50 50 thing let me let me keep it real i think a lot of things have messed up people's mentalities when it comes to relationships and especially with social media one lifestyle content has definitely fucked up how a lot of females especially young women i would say about 30 35-ish and under, how they see relationships and how they feel like they should be treated in relationships. And like I always say, you have to watch and be careful who you're listening to because people only show you a highlight reel of their life, right? So you guys see these beautiful women on Instagram and on TikTok and they're showing you a soft life. Oh, I live a soft life, okay? Any wig I want, my man buys, nails done, hair done, everything did, Louis Vuitton bags, Chanel bags. And you know, so we're looking at their soft life, but you don't know what is going on behind the scenes. She might have a soft life to us on the internet, but might have hard lumps in the back of her head. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really know what people are going through. Another thing that has been very detrimental to how people think about relationships online is also the red pill community. So I think between the red pill community and those are the, the bitter brads, okay, of social media. These are bitter men, you know, who say that at 30, women are washed up. They're ran through and all this shit. Meanwhile, uh, it doesn't come for them, though. So if they're ran through, who is fucking these women to make them ran through? It's y'all dusty dudes. It's y'all dusty dustins, okay, and bitter brads. Why do you think these women who have been ran through have issues? It's because of y'all. So it's funny how this same ideology does not apply towards men or the red pill community, but it, it applies towards women. So a woman who's 35 and over, she's washed up. She just needs to off herself. And, you know, once you hit 30, you're just over the hill. But meanwhile, a man who's 30 
is just automatically desirable. Uh-uh, hold your horses, bitch. Not all of y'all are uh, desirable once y'all hit 30. What are y'all doing with your life? Are you successful? Do you have yourself together? So you have a lot of people who not have access to sit on their platforms and talk who really should be quiet, who really should sit these conversations out. Because I think what a lot of adults have done, y'all have literally screwed up how these young men and women think and see each other. And it's really, really sad. This is why now when you go into the club, there's really no male-female interaction. Everybody's just on their phone. They're not talking. They're not really dancing. They're hanging with their clique that they came with. And that's not how it was when we were younger. Like you went out to meet people. You went out to talk to people. And it's really sad. Um, <laughs> yes, I call them Dusty Dustins, okay? Um, so let me just play some clips. Like these are the videos that go viral. And it just, it just behooves me how some of these women think. And, and men. And a lot of them are nothing to write home about. So we're going to watch this girl. She's out here giving advice to young women. And she's basically saying, if you're not, you know what I'm saying? If you're not willing to put her up and make her feel good, honey, she ain't fucking with you. So we're going to listen to her rant. Let me mute my mic. Here are some things I expect a man to pay for while I'm dating him or we're in a relationship. All dates. Like, sir, you're courting me, you're dating me, like, you should be paying for the date. I don't pay for dates, so, I like, what are we doing here? Why would you ask me on a date if you're not going to pay for it? That doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I know you don't want to look at my crusty nails, and my nails are never crusty because I'm a model, so I have to get my nails done for shoots, and, like, I usually upkeep my nails once every two weeks. So you got to be able to afford my nails to be done once every two weeks. You just have to. To date me honestly when it comes to hair i have like that wash and go hair but still products are expensive like my conditioners my leave-ins my detanglers my co-washes like hair is expensive so i'm gonna need you to front the bill on that you know like you need to help me out now if you guys don't already know ubers are a given a must like i do not pay for my transportation to these dates you must get my uber that is just the standard I don't like looking like a bush monkey, so waxing is a given. I feel like nobody wants to see that. So, yeah, you got my wax, right? You got my wax. Now, further down the line, I'm not talking about the first few dates, but eventually you're going to have to pay my rent. Like, girls got bills to pay, and I am too feminine to, like, pay for myself. So, I mean, I do that now, but, like, if I'm with you, why would I pay for my own bills? Oh, no. You got me cracking up. Somebody said, who's Mustiniana? Not y'all called her Mustachiana. Y'all are a mess. Um, okay, girl. Let me play this other one for y'all, this other podcast. So if you're making fifty thousand dollars, don't date. I'm I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date. Again, I'm with you. You're not ready to date. You're not ready to date because courtship costs. Okay. Everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park. Eventually, Shorty is going to need a sip of something. She's going to be thirsty. <laughs> this not... bottle of water is $3 in Atlanta. Let's not play. So if you don't have any expendable cash, don't date. And whatever that looks like for you, you might only make 50000 but you live in a shoe. And now you got expendable cash. Or get you a bottom of the barrel bitch that's going to date you when you have no money. If she doesn't have that expectation, and I'm going to tell you this right now, enjoy it while it lasts because eventually you're going to want to run. Because she doesn't stretch you. She doesn't make you the man that you need to become. She allows you to be the stagnant dude in the same jeans for days. You know what I'm saying? Let me cut. No, I'm just talk about me. It. All right, let me come back on screen, child. So, you know, th this is what we have on social media. And some people are saying that the girl's trolling. You know, I don't know. But let's not act like we haven't ran across people who really talk like that. They feel like, you know, um, you know, if they're dating, there's courting, you should be paying for everything. And I do feel like, you know, when you're going out on a date with um, a guy, especially for the first time, I do feel like he should pay. If he wants to take you out on a date, that's just how it's always been. The problem is now you have women on a first date, you want to go to the most expensive restaurant in town. Well, that's not really what people are trying to do. 
Um, I want to work my way up to that. If I'm just me, I don't even know your last name. Why are we eating at Fogo de Chow? That is where people go, you know, anniversaries, birthdays, at least with somebody that I know their first and last name. So it's like we have these weird expectations. And a lot of times it's like, you know, some of the women who are demanding this particular type of treatment, can you even afford to take yourself out to eat? And that's the thing. If you can't even afford to take yourself out to nice restaurants, you can't then just put that onus on somebody that you're just meeting for the first time. So I think that a lot of these relationship gurus and these podcasts have totally ruined the mentality. I think once you are in a relationship, again, you have to do what works for you, but it, it really just depends. For some people, you know, I'm a man. I'm going to make sure the majority of the bills are paid, the, the house note, the car note, things like that. And then they'll have it where their woman is just paying for the groceries, you know what I'm saying, cleaning, doing laundry, stuff like that. But everything in a relationship is give and take, right? So even if you are living like a blessed, soft life where you don't have to really pay for anything, all your expenses are paid for, the, the mortgage, the house and things like that, no man is going to let you just sit around and just live a soft life where they're just, you know, spending money on you, you know, buying you $4,000 Chanel bags and Dior shoes. Something is expected of that. And I think that's where people are not having an honest conversation where they're making it seem like, oh, I just live a soft life and nothing else. No, the person who's providing you that soft life, there has to be give and take. If I'm funding your lifestyle, and I'm making sure the house is paid, the mortgage is paid. You damn right, my dinner better be on the table by the time I get off work and I've worked a full, you know what I'm saying, eight, 10 hour day to make sure that we can afford this home. Dinner better be ready by seven. My kids better be, you know, clean, homework done, kitchen clean. It is give and take. Nobody's gonna keep spending money and then there's nothing else in it for them. And I think that's where people are not being honest. You know what I'm saying? And if you are in that type of relationship and you really appreciate that person, you're going to want to do that because you feel secure in that relationship. This person's taking care of you financially. So why would you not suck their peen every damn night as soon as they walk in the door? And I'm just, <laughs> let me stop. I'm just playing, but you know what I mean? Like you're going to want to, because you're able to rest in your femininity, right? You feel protected financially. Why would you not want to do that? And so now this is why I got to hold my good sis accountable, okay? Cardi and I love you, but you was the same one in WAP. Remember the WAP song? I don't cook, I don't clean, but I'll tell you how I got that ring. So you yourself are setting unrealistic expectations for these young girls where they think they can live a soft life, live in a mansion, everything's paid for and they ain't got to cook and clean? Bitch, in what world? I mean, you could have a maid, but then if that's the case, your man can fuck the maid. You got to bring something to the table as a woman when you're dealing with somebody who is successful, who has themselves together. Nobody wants to be with a beautiful bum, okay? It might be fun at first, you know, wild, fun, sex, freaky shit. But after a while, that gets old. Some You're going to want to have somebody that brings something to the table, that elevates you, that makes you, you know, better. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to eventually elevate together. And, and the same for young girls. You know, when you're young as women, we make mistakes. We get, you know, with the wrong guys and things like that. But eventually, you want somebody who brings something to the table. Nobody wants to take care of some single mother's son. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I, I think like the expectations just don't make sense. And again, regardless if you're a man or, or a woman, you have to think to yourself, you can't expect more out of somebody than you're, than you're willing to bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to do for yourself because in the event that person leaves you or quote unquote trades you in for something younger, then what? Don't just sit around and live a soft life. You better make sure you get some soft education, a soft hustle in the event that relationship changes. You know, because again, when you're dealing with men who got money and men who have means, they also have options. So don't ever get comfortable. You know, and I just think we have to have real conversations. I think, you know, this red pill mentality where, you know, I mean, I've seen like the most dustiest men online say that because they're a man, they're the, they're the chase. You know, people are chasing them and, you know, they have their options of all these women. 
So your body's not even on point. You don't even go to the gym. Nobody's chasing you in droves like that. You're just talking to be talking on TikTok. Your hairline is messed up. Your fade is whack. Like, what are you talking? Nobody's chasing you down in droves. But again, you've had like this whole red pill community that have gassed up these guys to think that they're more valuable than what they really are. Just like you had the Bitter Betty Brigade that have gassed up these girls like Mustachiana to think that they're more valuable than what they are. You got to kind of self-assess. You got to take an honest look at yourself in the mirror and understand what you bring to the table and what you don't bring to the table. And I think that's the problem is that people are not honest. You have people who are, you know, kind of down here, no shade, but they want the folks up here. But then the folks who are up here who are kind of, you know, aligned together and on the same level, you know what I'm saying? They're looking at the folks up here. And it's like, again, we're trying to be with people who we're equally yoked with. And there's nothing wrong with trying to elevate and shoot for that. But if you don't bring anything to the table, why, why do you think that a woman who worked hard, has a good job, degrees, you know what I'm saying? Why do you think that she should be overlooked compared to a woman who didn't do that? Like, like everybody's fighting for the same thing, right? They want the baller. They want to be taken care of, all that stuff. And so it's like you have women who haven't gotten themselves together yet and they're shooting for the same thing. So I just think like people need to like really understand where they stand in the grand scheme of things. Again, you got to do what works for your relationship. If you know that you have a hardworking man and he's doing what he needs to do, he's providing, you know, because so many times online, everybody keeps talking about the financial, you know, oh, my man takes me on trips, my man does this and that, and that's great. But it's not always about the money. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know we would hear the word a lot, high value man, high value man. And everything with high value man that's attached to that is monetary. Well, what about integrity? What about, you know, how does he make you feel spiritually? Is there a real connection? Because there's a lot of things that are high value that money is not attached to that. You know, so I, you can't take none of it to the grave with you. But outside of money, what does that person do? Do they elevate you? Do they bring something good out of you? You know, so I think that's what people really need to look at. And also, let's not forget, realistically, in today's economy, unless you're dating the 1%, the average person, right, outside of this social media bubble, outside of this influencer bubble, the average people who are watching my stream right now, y'all don't live that 1% lifestyle. Let's keep that real. Y'all need two incomes to survive in this day and age. Rent is super high. Mortgage interest is high. Car loan interests are high. So most people cannot survive right now on just one income. It'd be nice, but most people cannot. That doesn't make you less of a woman because you're willing to go half on the rent with your man. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make you less of a man because you need help. You guys have to elevate together and take care of your household. Why put all of that strain on one person and then what? Y'all going to get kicked out the, the damn house because y'all can't afford it because it's all on him? So again, everybody has to do some assessment of their relationship and really understand what works for them and stop trying to live vicariously through these celebrities and through these influences online. Because again, everything that glitters is not gold. So that's why I was, I don't envy anybody's relationship because you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. You don't know what type of stuff they're having to do and how they're having to sell their souls to maintain that lifestyle. Remember, everybody thought Cassie had a maid. She's beautiful, you know, she's dating an older man, Diddy. She doesn't have to pay for anything. Oh, every time we seen Cass, uh, Cassie, she was Chanel down, Dior down, nails done, hair done, everything did. And we find out she was a whole drug addict because that man had her so high on pills and was pimping her out and was beating her. Look at Kim Porter, rest in peace. She thought the grass was greener on the other side running, you know what I'm saying, to go get with Diddy, because remember her and Misha was friends. So she got with Diddy behind Misha's back, but y'all's not ready for that conversation, Misa. Excuse me. So she got with Diddy thinking it was sweet, and she ended up getting the same man that Misa had, a violent, narcissistic demon. So that's why I don't envy folks. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got to understand, maybe your man is not part of that 1%, 
But as long as he's trying and he's making your household what it is, a real household with love and, you know, he's there and he's a good father and a good provider, that's really what matters. But on the flip side, don't take care of anybody either. That's where women, you know, we have to be smart. It's not your job to build a bear, okay? Don't be Barbara the Builder. People have to come to the table with something. And again, also the age thing. We have to talk about the age thing. And I said this with the whole Ebony Williams situation when people were knocking her. I said a lot of y'all in y'all's 20s and early 30s want to knock her. Ebony's not in y'all's age bracket. So y'all are comparing your situation to a woman who is 40 plus and a millionaire. She has every right to say I'm not dating a bus driver. That woman is established and she has herself together and she's in a different age. She's in a different space in her life. When you are in your 20s, you guys can help build each other up and you know what I'm saying, uh, try and figure out where y'all want to be five, 10 years from now. When you're in your 40s, you don't got no, you know, 10, 15 years to waste. So depending on the age you're at, no, you have to come to the table with something. At my big age, I'm not impressed by somebody having a car. Oh, I have a car. So the fuck what? I've had a car since I was 18. And what else do you have at your big age? So again, the conversations are going to be different depending on where you're at in the age spectrum. Now, if you're 21 and you're trying to court another 20-something-year-old, you having your own car and being financially responsible at 21, that is amazing. That's good. But if you don't have a, a brand new car at 21, it's also okay. But I'm not going to pat a 40-year-old man on the back because he has a car. <laughs> and <laughs> do you own a house? What that credit look like? So there's just certain things. So, so we got to also remember that. That's why I tell young people all the time, stop comparing yourself to people who are 20 plus years older than y'all. And influencers. The average 21, 22, 23 year old they don't have it like Kai Sinat, Aiden Ross, and the rest of these other I showed speed stop, whatever the hell I showed speed's name is, I was butcher his name. They don't have it like that. That is an anomaly. But y'all will compare yourselves to them. Like, oh well, uh Kai Sinat is rich. I'm trying to pull me a Kai Sinat. You're not gonna pull that at 21 because the average 21 to 22, 23 year old, they don't have it like that. So if you're a 21-year-old female, you and that 22, 23-year-old, y'all are going to have to build each other up. That is not the norm. So people have to remember that. Just in the same breath, if you're in your late 30s, early 40s, we're not going to be impressed by you having a car or a studio apartment. That's not impressive. Do you own your own home? Is your credit good? Do you run your own business? What all do you do? So those conversations are going to be different. That's why I tell girls, stop comparing yourself to these women on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. These women are in their 50s. They didn't have, if you, if you could go back in a time machine, you think NeNe had everything that she has now or Portia or Candy when they were in their 20s, when they were your age? Absolutely not. Where I'm at now at my age, I didn't have this shit when I was in my 20s. I worked hard for it. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm sitting in my beautiful home. But that, that took years. So you can't compare yourself to people who had a 20-year head start. So you got to know where you lie in the grand scheme of things. And I think that's where people have to be really, really honest. You know, and we have to stop shaming people, you know, what they do in their relationships and whatever works for them. Because at the end of the day, you can't date everybody. You don't control people's relationships. I know it sounds good on social media to rant and rave, like I said in my last stream. Y'all can pick it all you want in my comment section. But I don't care if somebody is dating an 18-year-old and they're in their 30s or 40s. I don't care. It's not against the law. That is their business. That is between those two. That is between their families. Is it ideal? Does it make me give certain people the side eye? Yes. But I'm not going to get bent out of shape over something that is not illegal. So I think that's the problem. Everybody's so worried about everybody else's relationships instead of focusing on their own and seeing how they can make it better and how they can elevate. They're doing too much comparing of other people's situations instead of putting that energy into their own. 
So that's the thing I, I disagree with Cardi about. If you're going to say and that's how you feel, stand on that shit. Fuck these people. They're always going to be mad at something. At the end of the day, you shouldn't have to explain yourself. What works for you is what works for you. But also understand to not envy somebody else's situation because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So like I said, while they're bragging about a soft life, they might have some hard lumps. So you just don't know. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.